Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nazanese. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So as you can see from the title, this is going to be the second installment into my book, Look, Makeup Tutorial Discussions, in which I recreate a book cover, biblical fiction, Christian fiction book cover, and I do a makeup tutorial to give you guys a final look, and I discuss my thoughts on the book. This is kind of like my book reviews, but more for those who are makeup enjoyers like myself. I am a freelance makeup artist on the side, and um, I love doing makeup. If you guys want my whole story on makeup art, you just let me know i can definitely talk about that and my beliefs um about makeup in general but if you haven't seen the first one i did on daughter of rome by tessa afshar just click the eye on the screen to go watch that that is broken up into a two-part video this one might be a two-part video as well i apologize but we are going to be discussing star of persia by miss jill eileen smith this book came out tuesday march 3rd and i just i love this book i gave it five stars i have finally found my esther story you guys i have only read one other esther book and that was esther um by angela hunt and i gave that one four stars i did enjoy it but i felt like it was missing something and this one almost got a 4.5 but i decided to go with a five star rating because it just was so good so if you haven't seen my reading vlog for this click the on screen to go to that but um yeah so the way we're gonna do these videos you know what where's the things all right so i have my little sticky note um on how i break this video down while i'm doing makeup so um this will be broken up into eight kind of parts so the first portion i'm going to talk about the synopsis i'm going to read the actual synopsis of the book to you guys um after that i'm going to go through my rating and my reading experience as a second portion third we're going to talk about characters then we're going to get into the plot we're going to talk about any romance that was in the book we're going to talk about faith aspects we're going to talk about the scriptures and then some of my favorite quotes now i did tab the book up i don't have my tabs unfortunately in the book like i mean i annotated but i don't have my tabs sadly yet but i really wanted to do this uh video because i just i love the colors on here isn't she stunning the purples the golds the blues orange yellows in the back i'm really going to be playing with purple and gold um i have no idea what i'm doing i just want to play with a bunch of the new makeup that i got from stephanie as well as from leona i think all of this if i'm not mistaken might just be from leona though i think i have something in here from stephanie as well but i'm really just playing with those items from them um that they sent me and yeah so i did my eyebrows already off camera i always do my eyebrows off camera um i'm using two brow pencils this one is the wet and no this one is the wet and wild brow pencil this is in the color summer brown um, it's really just an eyeliner. I use it as a brow pencil because it's cheap. It's 99 cent. You get a lot of product. So I use that for my brows. Um, and then I went over it with the e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. And this is in the shade Neutral Brown. Yeah, Neutral Brown. Um, I'm looking for new brow pencils. So yeah, I prefer the Maybelline one, but I can't really find that one too often. The one that comes in the green. It's like the green pencil. Can't really find that one too often. So I'm looking and I'm basically on the market for a new eyebrow pencil. That's not going to break my pocket. So let me know if you guys know any affordable ones, but, um, that's what I did off camera. I was going to do gel, but my gel, um, dried up. So I can't do that. I did moisturize. So, um, on my lips, I use the, what is this? The Carmex Daily Care and Fresh Cherry. Use that on my lips. Really moisturizing. Um, on my face right now, I'm using this. This is a Nivea face cream i just put it in this little container um don't really care for this but for now it's gonna work i'm going to be switching my moisturizer to the cetaphil moisturizing cream um primer wise i'm trying this one out from leona when she sent it to me it's the becca first light priming filter instant complexion refresh um it came out purple which a little bit shocked about that but it also has like little reflex in it so yeah we'll see how i feel about it um yeah so far so good so we have that one so everything as far as like skin prep lip prep is done on my face i gotta find somewhere to put all this stuff as i'm making this video so my table doesn't get too crowded but um yeah so let's get into the synopsis real quick of this book um i don't have on my glasses because i have the ring light right in front of me if you guys can see from my eyes but um yeah so i'm gonna quickly read the back and then we're gonna get into it and yeah we're gonna just have fun so i have my towel here just in case all right so on the back it says love duty fear courage in the court of the king which will prevail 
In an effort to complete a war his father had planned to win, King Xerxes calls every governor, satrap, I think that's how you say it, satrap, um, and official in his vast kingdom to his palace in Susa to strategize and feast. When they finally leave, he decides on one more week of frivolity, which ends in the banishment of his favorite wife, something he never intended to do. But when he discovers Esther, Xerxes is sure he has a second chance at happiness. In her wildest dreams, Esther could never have imagined that she would end up as Queen of Persia, yet she knows better than to become complacent. Another of Xerxes' wives is vying for a position, his closest advisor, has a deep and dangerous grudge against Esther's adoptive father. Caught in the middle of palace politics, Esther will find herself in an impossible position, risk her life, or consign, sorry, consign her people to annihilation. So, I hope that made sense. Sorry, I have my glasses on, so yeah. But, um, yeah, so this is adult biblical fiction all about the book of Esther. Pretty much, it's literally the complete book of Esther. Like, I really didn't mark any quotes in here, um, not quotes, but scriptures, simply because this is literally the 10 chapters of Esther in this book so um let me take this sticky note out so i can keep it here i'm gonna probably laminate the sticky note because this is pretty much going to be how i do all of my book with tutorials so again another quick glance at the cover so again i'm gonna try to really play up with the purples browns and gold colors um her lips are more of like a corally neutral color so we're gonna see what we can do with that again i don't have like a real set look in mind we just playing with the makeup on camera and prayerfully come out good yeah but um yeah and i'm really gonna be focused on, on purple because it really just pops so much but purples and golds for sure are gonna be on this look so um my rating like i said i gave it five stars let me open up goodreads real quick and um just have that open so i'm not lost as i'm talking about this because it is um pretty late since i've read the book i read the book a month ago <laughs> yeah a month ago it's april 3rd friday as i'm recording this so it's been a month since i read the book and i might not remember everything so i'm just going to be oh i gotta log back into the app mm. if you guys hear music i apologize i do have some music playing in the background um, I'm listening to Embassy Worship right now. If you guys don't know who that is, just uh, YouTube them. They're a great um, group. I don't want to say group, choir, praise and, team, pra praise and worship team. I don't really know what they call themselves, but they're awesome. Um, okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just flipping through <laughs> on my other phone because I'm recording on my actual cell phone right now um, because I like the quality and it autofocuses. So let's flip through. Here we go. So, yeah. I apologize, you guys. I think I made an error. <laughs> Did this book come out April 3rd or March 3rd? Yeah, okay. It did come out March 3rd, just making sure. So, I did, like I said, give this book a five star. Um, I absolutely loved my experience with reading. And let me start with the makeup. So, I'm going to start. I always start with my eyes and then do my face because I feel like I don't want fallout and stuff like that. So, let's find my primers. Um... I'm going to prime my eyes with the NYX HD eyeshadow primer. I love this stuff. And then I'm going to use the NYX Milk Jumbo Pencil as a base for my shadow. Um, but yes, so um, I gave this a five-star rating. I adored reading this book. Um, if you guys saw the reading vlog, you will see I, en I, I enjoyed it. My experience reading this was a little all over the place. I didn't know what to settle on um, because I felt like the, the pacing was good. But it also was a little too quick towards the end. But I also had to realize that um, when we studied Esther, and if you guys don't know, we did study the book of Esther. You can click the on the screen to go watch the playlist of that. Um, but when you study the book of Esther, the chapters in Esther are not super long. And chapter 10 is like really, really short. So um, I debated back and forth whether I was okay with the, the fast pace of the story. But um, overall, I thoroughly like thoroughly enjoyed everything the atmosphere the writing the characters the romance the plot everything was phenomenal to me and um i was hoping that was the case because i did read her previous story um, her previous novel or bind up novel which was the heart of a king which was the story of, of king solomon and his four wives which had five perspectives and um i enjoyed it i gave it four stars but i felt like something was missing and with this one i got everything that i thought was missing from that book and this book so i thoroughly enjoyed that
so um let's move on to characters now i'm gonna try to um remember which characters to talk about because there's so many characters and normally i would write down the characters and exactly what i want to talk about i didn't do that this is literally just an on the fly type of thing i'm trying to keep myself occupied right now um it is the weekend you know everybody's still home due to covid and if you guys don't know what my thoughts are on covid you can click the i or check the description box to um, see my thoughts. But in general, I think everyone just needs to stop playing games, stay home, so that we can at least get this underway. Um, because people are just not staying home. And it's making me irritated. Like I said, my spirit was bothered. Um, but again, if you want to know my full thoughts, just go watch that video. Um, but yeah, so characters. Let's talk about Esther first, since obviously the story is about her. Um, and again, this is the Milk Jumbo Pencil from NYX. I'm using it as a base to make sure the colors pop and stick clearly. Hopefully, again, my music isn't too loud for you guys. I don't want this too harsh. So let's blend that out a little more. Um, I may stop in between because I am waiting on a package. So, yeah. I am not even going to sweat that right now. Can't do it. <laughs> but, um... I do have my hand sanitizer here, okay? We making sure my hands are sanitized in between every type of application. So, um, yeah. Actually, let me just sanitize again now so you guys see. Um, I may be home, but I'm still making sure that I sanitize. But, um, all right. So, let's talk about Esther. Or Hadassah, rather. So, we meet her. First of all, the prologue was epic to me. Um, and I'm going to try to make this non-spoiler, but there might be spoilers. I apologize. So, you know. I apologize about that. Um, but let me make sure this is closed. I need to find a better setup or get like a bigger table to do these videos. Okay, before I do that, let me show you the palette. So I'm playing with two palettes that I got from Diana. Yes. Um, and also I got some lashes from her. So she is starting a lash company. I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not, but I'm letting you guys know now. Um, she is starting a lash business, which I think is so awesome. Um, she sent me three pairs of lashes to try out, and I'm going to be trying these pair right here. These are so cute. I didn't want to do something over the top, so I think these are really cute. They're a bit natural. They're crisscross, um, and they have that sort of flair to them, so that I like that a lot. These are the M29s. I'm not sure if it's going to like focus on that or not. M29, boom. Take it off the back again, Shanae. <laughs> there we go. So again, M29s, I think they're really pretty. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous pair of lashes. And I really wanted to use these for this video. I don't even know how to open this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Give you guys a closer look. They really look amazing. So we have those that we're going to be working with today. I'm also going to be messing with the Anastasia Bobbly hair. <laughs> The Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Jackie Ina palette. I think this palette is stunning. I, like I said, I'm playing with purples and golds. So we will see. We have purples and golds in here. We have some neutral shades that I can play with. So we have that. I'm probably going to use a neutral shade out of here. And then I also have the It's All Good palette from ColourPop. And the colors are gorgeous. I really think I'm going to play with a purple out of here though. I think I'm really going to just play with this purple, but we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. So what I'm going to do first is move these plastics off. I'm going to go grab my alcohol spray real quick so that I can spray everything. Um, I always sanitize my makeup. I sanitized when I first got this, the products in the, in the mail from her, but um, I also want to re-sanitize with everything going on again. Okay, and um, you may hear music soon because my brother's up, so yeah. Um, but I put alcohol in a spray bottle for all sanitization with my makeup my personal makeup as well as my professional kit um these are from my pro kit so just know that um but it's 70 percent alcohol is what i use i don't use 90 percent because it dries too quickly so literally just spritzing spritz 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 there we go everything smells like alcohol now but that's okay all right so i need to do a crease color first I'm going to be using the same brushes from the last tutorial with additional two brushes, but, <clears throat> okay, <coughs> but, um, let's talk characters, Hadassah, 
So, no, I was saying, I was talking about the prologue, sorry. So, with the prologue, I really liked how Jill set the prologue up because in the prologue, um, you see Hadassah at a young age with her aunt and you also get to see Vashti, which actually I'm going to talk about Vashti first then talk about Hadassah, but um, I really like the interaction they had and how she set up for the change in power that was to come because Vashti thought that Hadassah was a very, very pretty girl. Um, it was epic. I'm not going to go into the entire details of the prologue, but the prologue was epic. So let's talk about Queen Vashti. So what I like about what Jill did with this story is that she, give me one second to pick a color. I think I'm going to go with this. It's called All About It this all about it here and i'm going to mix it with you got it so all about it and you got it which is a little bit more orangey it's gonna be in my crease but what i like that she did with bashi is she really gave bashi a character mm, i'm looking at this color on my skin we'll make it work i'm using all about it first i'm noticing this is a little powdery um but we're gonna use all about it first but yeah like i was saying she gave vashti a really nice um personality we don't get to learn much about vashti outside of her declining the king when she was called in and i like that um she didn't make vashti rude um vashti was a sweet woman she seemed to really care for the king and um i like that about her she really had a nice personality and you got to see vashti for a few chapters and what i like about the chapters is that no one chapter is focused on one character you have um multiple perspectives in each chapter so you may have a chapter with vashti and a mistress you may have a chapter with um hadassah and xerxes or you may have a chapter with um mordecai and Haman's perspective like the perspectives are intertwined into the chapters which i love um, the main characters of the story are Queen Vashti, um, Esther, aka Hadassah, a mistress who is a concubine in a sense, right? I guess that's what they call them. Um, obviously King Xerxes, you have Haman, you have, um, Mem Memukin, or Memukin, uh, you have Mordecai. I think those are the main characters. There is another character who is Queen or Mother, Queen Mother At Atasa, Atosa don't really know um and then his sons but i'm going all over the place i apologize these videos I, I don't have any notes now so i have to go off the top of my head but i really did appreciate that um and i'm going back in like i said with that you got it color to put into the crease never pull on your eyes i said this in the last video as a freelance makeup artist i always tell my clients never to pull on their eyes the upper the lower don't ever tug but i do it slightly when i'm applying my makeup so that i can really get to where i need to go but um yeah so i really appreciated that um all right now colors these are really bright colors i didn't really want it to be too orangey but that's okay um but um what was i saying yeah i liked her personality she was really sweet she was really kind she was not rude at all and um she wasn't just with xerxes to be with him to be queen um she really loved him and i just i love the relationship between her and xerxes but i'll get to that um so then back to hadassah hadassah was very very sweet um she had her dream she had her goal she had ideas of what she wanted to do with herself um there was a situation that happened with a little romance i'll talk about because it kind of <laughs> it pissed me off but um hadassah is a very strong girl especially when she had to go to the palace she's very strong um she dealt with a lot with the loss of her parents and then having the loss of another relative then being the only one that um mordecai could rely on she showed her a lot and she pulled through and i love that about her even at a young age then we have mordecai um, I enjoy Mordecai in general, even from the actual book of Esther, but in this, I found that he was a little bit slight, slightly annoying for me, um, just because he relied too much on Hadassah, and he really didn't seem to, um, understand that until it was too late, so, you know, I enjoyed Mordecai, but he still annoyed me. Um, King Xerxes. I adored the way Jill wrote King Xerxes in this story because he was not just this brooding, bro, brooding, 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 brooding guy. Um, he wasn't just all about 
his authority and his power. He really seemed to care. But I also love the dynamic of him dealing with personal situations, his personal emotions and thoughts concerning his own father. Um, and in general, how he ruled. I really, really appreciated that about his character. Because most of the time when we hear about Xerxes, he's this evil guy. He's rude. He's disrespectful. But um, the way she wrote him was phenomenal. I love that. Um, in this story, you also have Haman. Haman pissed me off. But we know how I feel about Haman. Haman is just annoying, okay? He's annoying. Then we have Atosa, who is Xerxes' mother. I don't really know how to feel about her. Because part of me dislikes her, but another part of me is just like, I feel bad. Let me turn this down a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's too loud. I'll put it on one. Okay. But yeah, she... It wasn't that she did anything, but it's the simple fact that she didn't do anything. Like, when certain things happened, she kind of, like, egged on a mistress, which kind of, like, bothered me a bit. Um, but there was a scene with her that, like, literally almost made, almost made me cry. Almost made me cry. If you saw my reading blog, you know what I'm talking about. Um, then we have a mistress, who's another character. She's a concubine. She irritates me. She, she just wants to be queen. She wants power. She wants authority. She is also the mother of his two sons. Um... Artaxerxes, I think that's how you say, say his name, Artaxerxes and Darius. I think it's Darius, but the audiobook when I was listening to it was saying Darius, so don't know. But, um, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. Okay, so we're done with that. So, I really want to play with that purple, but I also like these purples over here. Mm. I'm going to go. Okay, let me swatch that purple and ooh, 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 ooh. this is hard okay i think i'm gonna have to go with that purple because that's actually the purple that i want so we're gonna go with this purple yeah because that other one is not purpley it's more like magenta -y. so we're gonna go to the jackie Ina palette and i'm using the color shookington <laughs> this color right here is gorgeous purple gorgeous and this is not going to be an over the top look at all this is going to be a simple si simple simple bright and bold fun look okay so i'm just taking this brush here um and i'm gonna pack that color on my lids oh that is gorgeous this color is gorgeous oh god i love that color i will say this jackie Ina palette is popping jackie Ina, if you guys don't know is a beauty guru she's been a beauty guru for a minute on um youtube and i enjoy her so i'm really glad to own this palette and again thank you sis for gifting me this palette because she is gorgeous so you just have that color packed packed on i'm gonna pack on one more layer But I'm really trying to get that purple that is on this. So, like, that is this purple here. Yes, we want. Um, this is the other eye. But, yeah, Amestris, mm, she's definitely one of those women you just can't stand. Um, she's, like, essential to the story for the growth of the other characters. But she's one of those characters that you're just like, why is she alive? Like, why is she around? Why was she the one marrying him? Why did she even become a concubine? Her whole her whole goal was to become queen any by any means, and um, she did some evil things. She did some messed up things, but she never really prevailed all the way. Um, so we have that Memu Memu Kang or Memu Ken, however you say his name. He was annoying. He was kind of like the pet to um, a mistress. He really didn't do much but what she said there were scenes where you know he tried to be smart and protect himself but other than that no i think i want to go with this color it's called rock sugar this color here i think i want to go with this color um again i'm just on the fly with this i don't want it to be vibrant or bold rather but we'll make it work we'll, we'll make it work i'm just putting it on the outer third we're gonna make this work 
this is what I do when I don't know what I want to do but I have an idea of colors we just play and blend and make it work but um yeah Mamukin Mamukane I don't know how you pronounce it at this point I don't really care he's he was essential to the story I got it um he's definitely I think he was in the bible if I'm not mistaken in the actual book of Esther but he irritated me um just because he whined and complained too much very sneaky in how he did things but um overall again like I, I don't know he was a character that I understood was essential but at the same time just like why then we have good old douchebag Haman <laughs> um Haman is just evil period at the end of the day he's an evil guy he is also a descendant of King Agag right Agag Ag he's an Agite period um and if you know the whole situation when King Saul was supposed to kill um the king and didn't kill the king and let him go or not let him go but he kept the king and then Samuel ended up killing the king that whole situation yeah that situation is the relation between um Haman and them and why Haman has a huge grudge against Mordecai now there was a reason behind the grudge which I'll get to in a second but I think I spoke about all the oh no there was two other characters and I cannot for the life of me remember their names so we have Gad yeah so Gad is a guy that um was supposed to marry um Hadassah I'm trying to just find her friend's name but I cannot oh and Haggai I forgot about Haggai so I'm gonna talk about Haggai too Haggai was the one that was in charge of um the king's harem the virgins rather but we'll talk about that in a second so we're gonna talk about Haggai we're gonna talk about Gad and um we're also gonna talk about her friend which for the life of me I cannot find her name I'm really trying to find this dang girl name, y'all. This is why you need to have tabs in your books when, before you do videos, but I forgot, so. Jesus, give it to me, God. I really can't find his, the name now, and it's kind of sad that I can't find it. <laughs> oh my God, her best friend. Did I put it in my review? I'm sorry, guys. This 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 is like a real straight up raw video, no notes, no nothing. Um No, I I did not talk about her friend. Ugh. And I can't mention her name because I cannot remember her friend's name. Alright, but whatever. So um, Gad was a guy she was supposed to go with, uh, or be married to. He really didn't have a personality in the story, but there was a scene or a situation that happened that kind of, like, made me hate him. Um, if you saw my reading vlog, then you know what I'm talking about. But there was a scene that involved him, and it really just made me dislike him as a character, because he seemed like a weak-minded man. Um, her best friend, I don't know how to feel about her best friend as well because of that situation that took place um so it's just like do i do i get mad with a friend or do i not be mad with like it's one of those situations where you just don't know right but um okay i'm just going back into the crease with that color that rock sugar color just to deepen it up just slightly but um yeah so Haggai is the eunuch that's over the king's harem and we love Haggai. Haggai, I really enjoyed Haggai period in general from the book of Esther when I studied it. But um, I like that he had like an actual personality in the story and that he was really kind and sweet with um, Esther. You saw that he really favored her much more and he was really nice and kind and he was kind of like a big brother in a sense. Um, you know, he never pushed too hard with Esther but Esther wasn't rude in general like she just had such a humility and humbleness about her that um I think it was epic how things went this might look crazy right now y'all and I'm looking a little hard because the ring light is like messing with my eyesight and I ain't got a lessons one at the same time so I'll be trying to make this work 
but um <laughs> yeah um trying to just make sure this is blending but uh yeah that's it i guess as far as characters i'm gonna have an actual review sit down review where i talk about it in like five minutes five minute review but um what's next so we're you talking about plot so the plot of this was a little it was there obviously as to becoming queen but i'm gonna start with the first plot which is the whole situation with vashti queen vashti when she gets um banished for denying the king so what i enjoyed the most about the whole her being banished is that it was a plot or a scheme rather set up by a mistress um a mistress basically really just wanted her out of the picture <laughs> she wanted to be queen um so she was just like i need to find a way to get this woman about the picture so she devised a plan and told it to memukin memukin however you say his name it's m-e-m-u-c-a-n memukin memukin however but this is orange juice i'm drinking but um i'm sorry guys i'm really liking the way it's coming out so far I like that pop of the arm. I'm sorry, guys. Um, you guys know I don't play with makeup as often as I want to because it is a lot of work. Um, especially trying to make tutorials and stuff. But when I do, oh yes, God, <laughs> we are happy. Just blending this out in the crease. But um, yeah, that that was a whole plot scheme, and I mean, a mistress. As much as I dislike her, she know how to plot. She know how to scheme, and she know how to like make it happen. She's a very resourceful, evil woman, though. Um, but I didn't really care for it. Like, it made me cry. It made me want to, like, cry my tears out. Cry my tears out. Cry, cry my eyes out because she was real evil. You know, that whole plot just to get her kicked out. And it worked, of course. We know that um, Vashti got banished. But it happened in a moment when Xerxes was drunk. And um, Xerxes didn't realize he basically kicked out his favorite wife <laughs> his wife is going like his favorite woman period he kicked her out um and when he did realize and come to he was so angry with everyone but um i just i like the interaction and the dialogue and how it all came to be or was planned out and how it was executed um because it really just lets you see how evil a mistress is one it also lets you see that when you're drunk you can do stupid things and not realize you've done something stupid and the stupid things that you do might not seem important to you but they can be damaging to other people and even to yourself when you come to the realization of what you did um and at this time Xerxes was doing a lot of drinking celebrating and all this other stuff so yeah he was very very upset when he found out what he did when he realized what he did and um that man was down and out for hours and not even hours he was down and out for a, a couple years because uh Vashti was his favorite wife like she was the one you know he had the other ones but he wasn't really caring about the other ones um they were just there because they had to be at the time but um he more so truly loved um Vashti I'm sorry I'm looking I'm going to take edges from the jackie aina palette this is like orangey kind of color orange brown orange brown yes i'm gonna take that with that you got it color again it looks like this a little orangey because i'm trying to get a bit of that like orange color there from the clouds up there so we're just gonna we're gonna pop it here in the crease oh yeah sunset i'm not gonna pack it on too crazy i just want it there and then i'm gonna do a lot of blending sorry if you guys hate my family <laughs> you know everybody's home in quarantine so this is life at the moment but what is that oh okay
Sorry guys, I'm quiet because my mom and my brother are in the kitchen and they're talking super loud. So, yeah. But, um, that was one plot with, um, Bashti being kicked out. And it was really sad. I, I, I was really, like, sad about it. But, I mean, I know that it had to happen. It was essential to the storyline. So, I'm going back into that rock sugar with this brush again to really pop it into the crease. yes I'm trying to really see what i'm doing but um the next plot after that is obviously him getting the virgins and i like how that scene also happened um how it was mentioned by one of the servants simply because he was out of it like <laughs> xerxes was just doing nothing with his life he was really distraught about what happened um and kind of fell off as a king Okay, guys, sorry. I had a package and my family again, like I said, was talking. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, the situation with the whole getting the virgins, I, like I said, I like that idea and how they had a, um, what you call it? What you gonna call them things? Servant, basically, give the idea to, um, Memu King, not Memu King, to Xerxes. Um, and of course, he approved it, so we had that. So, that was great. I liked the meeting between Hegai and Esther, that was also amazing. Again, I like Hegai in general. Um, I did grab another palette. This is a Tarte palette. This is the Goddess Glam one. Ooh, y'all get to see all the mess. <laughs> is it gonna show the name of the palette? It's not gonna show the name. Sorry, it's a Goddess Glam. Um, This palette was from my sister Stephanie. Um, and here's what that looks like. I'm going to be using a combination of this and this as my brow bone highlight because these other two palettes don't really have a brow, bo brow bone highlight. So again, like I said, I'm just blending these two colors together for the brow bone. And again, I apologize. I'm just trying to make sure everything looks good. But, um, yeah, so after that, we have the whole thing. Okay, one thing I didn't like was the time skip. I will say that there was a major time skip between, um, when they first got there, the, they had the year of, you know, the beautification and the oils and the whole process. They had that whole year, but there wasn't a lot. And I, even if you watch my, my reading vlog, I even mentioned that I thought I was like a little bit lost, that I had to flip the page a few times to really see what, did I miss something? But no, she definitely just went straight into that. And I feel like she should have had like a header that says like one year later, because you don't really get to see the full process. And I personally would have enjoyed seeing the full process. But again, knowing that the book is um 300 pages i think but um yeah the book is like 350 pages already so i get that it couldn't be too long but i feel like she should have had that kind of notification like okay this is a year later but that was like my only gripe with the story um pretty much the only thing i really had a problem with um i kind of like how this look is coming along it looks a little muddy to me but again my eyesight is a little messed up because this ring light is like bam on my face but um looking in this mirror it doesn't look too bad and again, this is an on the fly. Normally, I kind of know what I want to do exactly using colors, but we're just playing with everything at this point. Everything is getting played with. So what I'm going to go into again is this goddess palette, and I'm going to take this brown. This brown. Oh, they have <laughs> they have names. Sorry. Um. So this color is called throne. No royalty. I think this is called royalty. <laughs> um. This one was beloved. This one was spell. I think um so yeah we're gonna go with that brown color and use it in the just to blend yeah there we go but um but um yeah I'm sorry you guys I'm going to go with my eyeliner right now because I can always come back and fix everything up that needs to be fixed so eyeliners I just dropped my foundation didn't I yep whatever eyeliners I have two so I'm going to use this nude eyeliner it's a the, it's from Shiseido, it's in medium natural, and it's their corrector pencil. I'm going to use this on my waterline. 
um i was gonna go with black but i want to open up the eye area because it's gonna be pretty dark so um i like the eyeliner i just it's really i don't like the brush i feel like they should have made the brush a little stiffer Um, because it does go everywhere <laughs> and I don't want my eyeliner my cat eyes super thick this is definitely one of them eyeliners you gotta have patience with Okay, so we have eyeliner down. It'll work until I put the lashes on. Um, because I always go and do it over. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Where's my lashes? Got my lash glue, dual lash glue, and this baby. I am gonna put some um shadow under my eyes as well. So don't worry about that. Um, here we go. I really like these lashes again. These are the M29s from um Leona's lash shop. I will put information about her lash store down below oh yeah these are gonna fit perfectly so what I do is I wrap my lashes around my finger to keep that curve shape going I like to keep the curve shape going so we gonna wrap them around the finger and while that's going I'm going to go in with do I want to use dollars see I want to use dollars that's what it's called it's called dollars <laughs> um I want to use this color it's definitely um a gold but it looks a little bit more greeny I don't want that so I'm not going to use that color I'm gonna go with the other palette and we're gonna go with heart to heart the shade here so i'm gonna take heart to heart and shookington and put it on the lower lash line so we're gonna go with shookington first yes god this is really pretty Chicken tin is probably like my new favorite color. I'm putting it all on the lower. Smoking it out. I'm also going to go in with that rock sugar, that dark purpley brown. And do it on the outer third as well. Keeping those same colors on the top, on the bottom. I do need to go back and blend it, but I'll blend and stuff once I put my lashes on. Alright. And then we're going to take this pencil brush and take that heart to heart and pop it in the inner corner. Ooh. That's pretty. Definitely not a color I normally would put into the inner corners here, duck. But a kind of, oh, I really like that. Wow. Am I using the right color? Yeah. That is gorgeous. Again, this is not a color I normally would stick into my inner tear duct color corner. I would use like a rose gold or something like that. But we will make this work today. That's pretty. I'll blend back later. But, um, so now we have to, they're curved enough the way I like. It. 
again my whole setup is crazy so i am apologizing but once i'm done i'm gonna actually like get dressed and show you guys like a full boom full look um but i'm pretty satisfied with the eyes outside of me having to blend which i guess i can do that now while i'm waiting Okay, so lashes are on. <clears throat> I really like them. Again, I don't normally do lashes personally for myself. I don't care for them. But um, I do ha like how they are bringing the entire look together. So I'm just going to use my lash curler real quick. I probably should have did this first. But where's my alcohol spray? Spray that down. I do like these lashes though. <clears throat> Definitely. So, sis, Leona, if you're watching, these lashes might be the one that I have to order from you. Um, but let me do this one first. So, I'm just going to curl my lash and that lash together. I think I put it too close to the inner corner on this eye because this eye is perfectly fine this one is a little too close but that's fine with me it doesn't really bother me too much okay so next I am going to go back over with the eyeliner. Okay, so my eyeliner doesn't look too bad now that I'm looking at it, but I'm going to go back over quickly just to make sure it blends. I like this. This is really pretty. I feel like I want to deepen up the corner, but I'm going to come back to the eyes. We're going to move on. We're going to move on because this video is already <laughs> super long. Um, so... Moving on to the face now. As I mentioned, I already had moisturized. Oh no, before I do that. Before she does that. Before she does that. And then we're going to get back into talking. <laughs> um, but before I do that, mascara. Um, I'm using the Fenty Beauty mascara sampler that um, Steph sent me on the lower lashes and the upper lashes. So... Normally, I would not tell you guys to blend your eyelashes with the fake lashes, but don't try not to put as much mascara on the falsies. Like, I'm really just trying to get the mascara onto my lashes. Did I put the other mascara up here? I don't think I did. No. Okay, okay. So, we did that. Um... Again, I'm going to fix everything up later, but <clears throat> we're still on plot. Still on plot. Foundation-wise, I'm using this Makeup Forever HD Ultra, excuse me, and this is a sample. It is 173Y445. I don't really know. It was a sample. I got it, and I actually do like this foundation. I'm using the brush that um, Leona sent me, the Doe Color, Dew Color. So we just go on. I only need one layer. I meant one layer. Um, so under eye concealer, we're gonna go with Warm Honey, LA Girl Pro Conceal. There it is. Okay. okay. And then I'm going to go in with fawn, which is my normal color, and I'm going to do that around my nose area. And 
and where I have light breakouts. So it's not super red. And I'm making sure to brush into my hairline and on my neck. I really like the way this is looking. Under eyes now. <clears throat> I'm debating between the Laura Mercier of the Becca. I'm going to go with the Laura Mercier. This is the translucent loose setting face powder. Um, I've been wanting to try it, so why not? And I'm going to put it under here. Just to set under the eyes. And this is another brush from Do Color that Leona gave me. Really just trying to set under there. I don't bake. I don't do any of that. That's not my style. Um, I think I mentioned that in a previous video. I, don't, I personally don't like to bake. Um, the Fit Me Maybelline, <coughs> Maybelline Fit Me Powder Matte and Poreless um, Normal to Oily. This one is in 330 Toffee. And I'm just going to push it into the skin. I'm going back in in the Jackie Aina palette in that purple sh Shookington, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to put that back underneath, buff it back under. Same thing with um, the two colors from the It's All Good palette. I'm going to go in with Rock Sugar to the outer third. And then go in with heart to heart in the inner corner. Tear duck. I think I got some goo on my brush by accident. Whatever. And as I'm putting it, I'm trying to blend it as best as I can. But I kind of like it just there. Um, okay. So. Face is set. We need to now contour and do blush. So I didn't grab a contouring palette, so let me go grab one now. Okay, guys, so I just grabbed these out of my kit. I couldn't even look at the colors. These are from BH, guys, not BH. These are from Black Radiance, excuse me, right? Black Radiance. Um, this is their highlighter palette. This is the dark to deep palette. I also have the light to medium as well as the medium to dark i'm gonna go with the medium to dark palette and um you literally get a contour a sculpt and a highlight i'm going to go with the contour and i'm gonna take this brush um this is just an elf blush brush <sighs> take that contour color and um Because I don't want it to be super, like, in my face type contour. But I do want to define contour enough definition. Um, I know that looks crazy. I will blend it out in a second. <laughs> okay, I'm just going back over with my powder brush and 
blending because that's what I do. I will contour, then blend, do blush, then blend again with the powder, and then do highlight, blend again, and then we'll be done. And then I can stop and talk about the book because trying to do that now is a little off. Um, okay, so blush, my go-to blush is my favorite blush from Milani. Um, it's Fantastical Mauve is what it's called. It is a gorgeous purple blush. Um, it's marbleized and I just, I like it. And I figured that'd be cute. Does she have, does she have blush? Her blush is more like corally pinky, but we gonna go a little bit more. I'm gonna make it light so it's not super mobby. But hers is more like a corally pink and I'm gonna do that. So it looks intense on camera, but it's not this tense in person, I promise you. <laughs> the settings on my camera is just really making this vibrant. It looks really crazy on camera right now. But I promise you guys, in person, it's not this crazy. It's really not this intense on camera. I mean, in person. So let me buff it again. I promise you, when you see the pictures, it's not this crazy. Okay. Um, highlight. Now, I'm stuck between two highlights right now. Um, I have the Becca Shimmering Skin Protect Perfector Press Powder in Champagne Pop. And then I have the Light Chaser. I might do the Light Chaser, though. Light Chaser looks like that. We're going to go with the Light Chaser. I'm going to use this brush again that I used to put the under eye pop powder. Mmm we'll see actually i'm gonna use both because this is not as vibrant as i want it to be okay that's not as vibrant as i want so we did that going in with the champagne pop now which i know that glit that that glitz that is glit all day yes it's a little crazy right there but um, give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. We're going to buff that out. <clears throat> I'm also going to put it over my Cupid's bow. I know it looks like OD. <laughs> We're going to buff it. We're going to buff it. We're going to buff, buff, baby, buff. There we go. I don't like the OD crazy highlights. Personally, I don't want myself unless I'm doing like a super all natural look, but I wanted it to be enough of a highlight. All right. I think the last thing we gotta do is pop the lips on. So I don't have a lip liner, so I guess I have to do a neutral color, which is fine. I'm gonna do my favorite lipstick from Lancome. Um, this is the Lancome Trendy Mauve Color Design Lipstick. I don't know if the name will focus for you guys. That's the color, but it's literally just a neutral mauve. Only because I don't have my lip liner and I don't feel like getting back up. It's literally just a neutral mauve lip. Um, but to give it a little bit more oomph, oomph, we're going to go with Revlon's um, lip. What is it? The Revlon Color Burst and Sunset Peach. To bring in more of that orangey color. Where's my tissue? I'm going to blot. As we use the term. And throw this on top. Yes. I like how this look came out. Without me fully planning it. And. I am. Loving these lashes right now i have to fix this corner though oh it came up is it is that what happened yeah it did come up so i have to quickly fix that fix that lash okay we got it down in some semblance of order um 
I'm gonna go right back over with the eyeliner. I really like this look though. There we go. And so, here is the look. Okay, so I have on a gray top. I didn't really have a purple one right now that I could find. Um, and I didn't feel like putting on a dress, so I just threw on this gray top. Um, it's a halter top right now. It's nice outside, so why not? But um, I'm going to go fix my hair, come back on camera, and then we won't finish discussing the book. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Here is the finished look. I went and fixed myself up just a little bit. Um, so my hair is straight, of course. I threw on this elephant brooch just because I thought it would be cute um, to make that gold in the corner pop a bit. Um, definitely would have been different if it was like a black shirt. I probably should have put on a black button up with this brooch. But um, I really, really, really like this. Um, I love the way it came out. I am loving these lashes really loving the lashes we having a little technical difficulties in this corner but that's okay that's okay but um quickly with the book here it oh this is so pretty i wish i would have made my purple a little bit more vibrant but i like the subtleness of it with these tutorials i definitely want it to be where i am not doing something over the top and bold or dramatic rather but something that's definitely wearable for you ladies and um i really just wanted to play with these colors um a lot I don't know what that is on my lash but yeah so here it is i really like how this came out it's so so pretty but um yeah so let's just finish talking so plot like i said we talked about um the whole thing with queen bashi being kicked out banished or rather we talked about um the whole bringing the concubine not, not the concubines bringing the virgins and them having the year of the beautification then we have the scene where it was now esther's time and that whole scene was beautiful um i enjoyed the interactions between um esther and ex excerpt xerxes excuse me so much um i'm gonna just skip ahead to the romance oh, the romance was so freaking amazing so you start off with the romance between xerxes and vashti and i love that they had a actual romance like it wasn't just like he's a king she's a queen she just abides by his rules like they actually had a connection had some romance and some love going on loved it. um the romance between esther and gad it wasn't really a romance per se so i really can't get mad but it was kind of a romance and it pissed me off so i'm not gonna talk no more about it again i don't want this to be like spoilery so i'm trying to be as vague as possible to get you guys to read the book um but sorry with the hand movements and everything but i really like this look you guys i'm blind as ever like it, everything is blurry and shiny right now but i know this looks good i'm looking in the mirror it looks real good she did that but um what else what else can I talk about? The romance between Esther and Xerxes was amazing. So the first night when she arrived, um, she came to his room. Obviously he's supposed to sleep with the girls and then um he basically discards them back into the harem but with esther it was more of a special moment and i thought it was like so sweet and so touching and it made me cry a little bit and gush and swoon a bit like i swooned for them so hard um and i liked it because most stories like i said when you hear about xerxes he's this evil man he's this brooding man he doesn't really care about the women but in this one she really crafted a true romance around it while also sticking as close to the Bible as possible. And I think she did an excellent job of using the entire book of Esther chapter 1 to chapter 10 like perfectly. Um, perfectly well. And I'm just, I'm just looking through to see what else we can talk about. So faith aspects. I thought the faith aspects in this were phenomenal. Obviously we all know Queen Esther is known for her speech of um, how she'll go to the king and if she dies she should die. Well she'll die. So I love that entire speech. Um, and I think that faith wise this was phenomenal because you have mordecai and you have um esther who know who god is and um they work hard and of course in the book of esther they don't mention god's name ever like that is the one book where god's name is not mentioned but you can see his hand working throughout and it was pretty much the same thing with this where you saw the hand of god at work without really the mention of really having the mention of his name so i thought it was phenomenal the way she did that um scripture use excellent the entire book of esther was used like literally and then before each part she also gives you like specifically where she's getting her fictionalization of the book from so like this first portion really focuses on esther chapter one 
um, part two focuses on Esther chapter two. Um, part three, more of Esther two, and then the last part, which is part four, it focuses really on Esther three, but you get the entirety of Esther. So she's really focusing on Esther one, two, three, and a little bit of ten, but um, it goes all throughout. I'm sorry, guys, I'm getting texts, so I'm looking at my phone, but um, yeah, so let's talk quotes. Again, I don't have any of my tabs, unfortunately, so I have to like flip through until I see something green. So let's let's do that. Let's flip through until I see some green. If, if there is even is a screen. Oh, look. So let's see. Who chapter is this? Mordecai. Um, there was a thing he said when when had he lost his love of God? When had he cared more for the things of this life than pleasing Adonai? And for me, that just was like eye opening because especially during this time that we're dealing with um, COVID-19, it's like before all of this happened, did you lose your love? For God like was your mind focused on other things and I think for me when you guys know I mentioned how I was feeling a little bit out of it um I think what it was is that I was so focused on DOI and getting things done for DOI and at the time frame that I wanted that I really forgot that this wasn't about just pleasing you guys it was more so daughter of increase was a gift from God and it's about pleasing God through the gift that he's given me and I think a lot of us tend to forget that sometimes that when God gives us gifts us with something be it a skill a talent a job a new place or whatever we sometimes become so consumed in it that we forget that it's about pleasing him and not pleasing the people that we're sharing the talents with and that's for me I thought it was really important for me to highlight that so I highlighted that part um is there anything else in here Yes, yeah, so we have no work was so important that a man should risk losing his family over, which I think is essential for men to really understand. Women as well, of course, because there are some women workaholics out there who put work over family, and I think that's never a good thing. Um, God created, he, he created us to be in a family. He, he created us to be um, in togetherness, and sometimes people forget to be together. And it's so bad because even in this time, we're dealing with COVID-19 and having to be um, isolated and quarantined inside, I see so many people say how they can't take it like they want to be out and it, it's sad because at this time I feel like this is the perfect time to be bonding with your family members playing games playing video games like play charades play monopoly like really play games really get to know each other and people are not taking this opportunity for that so I feel like that's sad um there was another quote here it says could she not trust the god of her father to keep her from the king's men and um in essence Hadassah was basically, you know, nervous and dealing with people, um, and her best friend's name was Jola. Finally got it. It doesn't even matter at this point anymore, but, um, you know, Hadassah, he, he was trying, Mordecai was trying to figure out a way to hide her, um, hi Mordecai was trying to figure out a way to hide Hadassah from the king's men so that she wouldn't have to go to the palace, but, um, he was really trying to understand, trying to remember that, you know, God, who is the God of everyone, who, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he could protect her if he wanted to. If he really didn't want her to be seen or to be taken, he could have protected her. So he was questioning himself like, can't the God of my fathers protect her kind of thing. And I thought that was interesting because sometimes we try to protect something in a different way from what God wants to be. I'm trying to figure out a way to say this. The way Mordecai wanted to protect Hadassah by keeping her away from the king and his men was very different from the way God sought out their protection because the way God protects you can also be a blessing for other people. So God protecting Hadassah ended up causing her to save her people, which blessed her people's life. Hopefully I just made sense. It made sense in my head, but I didn't think it through. I'm going to make sure the next video I do like this is a little bit more put together. Okay um there's another quote it says that a new wife could never replace the one a man had loved and lost and that's interesting because you know obviously Vashti is not dead but she was banished she can no longer come back and once the king writes an edict or decree and he uses his signet ring it cannot be um returned which I think is stupid personally I mean you're the king whether you wrote it or not it should be able to be turned over personally but they had stupid rules back then but um you know they were trying to find like a mistress was trying to replace um Vashti because she felt like she should have been queen but in her scheme of trying to get Vashti banished you got her banished but you did not become number one and that's what she wanted um so yeah um the relationship between Vashti and um no not Vashti between a mistress and um Esther was comical to me because Esther kind of understood 
understood what was going on and she never played games but it also irritated her mistress because her sons really adored esther and she really wanted the position that esther had so i thought it was interesting there was also another scene that i'm really trying to find that scene when it was her night it was esther's night and um she had to go to the king and she was talking to the king and really in depth asking him questions like what do you like to do and tell me about your war and tell me about your battle and things like that and i just thought it was so sweet and romantic because she really wanted to know who he was like it was cute um last thing i'm gonna talk about with the romance is i, I can't even say that because you guys have to read it to know more about the rom just know the romance between esther and king xerxes in this was epic epic um uh, Again, my only gripe was that I felt like the pacing was a little too fast towards the end. Um, and I find that's the case with most biblical fiction novels is that the pacing is pretty good, normal normal pacing throughout the story. And then when you get to that last one third, it's just like bam, 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 bam. Um, definitely a lot of stuff happened. But I had to really take a step back when I was reviewing this and really think like the book of Esther in chapter 10 and chapter 9 things happen quickly like really really quickly okay there was you also got to see the scene with um Haman when Esther had the banquet for Haman and the king and then she told the king about the whole plan of genocide and him trying to annihilate her people and things like that and him falling on her like you got to see the whole thing so like being able to read the book and visualize it even better was phenomenal I think if you love the book of Esther in the bible and you're looking for a way to really understand it more definitely pick up this book because this is this book is phenomenal to me I will have a two minute review coming soon where I talk about the video the book I might do that after this video <laughs> yes but um I think this is epic it's amazing it's phenomenal and I highly recommend you guys check this out so if you haven't already go grab a copy links are down below physical ebook all that great stuff audiobook down below i did listen to the audiobook as i read it um if you guys are looking to listen to the audiobook check out script i told a few of you ladies about it in the facebook group script is a app it's sort of like audible but 10 times better than audible personally with audible you pay 15 dollars a month and you only get one credit um with script you get you pay 9.99 and you have an un unlimited unlimited amount of ebooks that you can get so you can get as many ebooks as you want um but with their audiobooks they say it's unlimited but i think they limit you at three audiobooks a month which is still better you're paying ten dollars a month for three audiobooks a month i think it's perfect you can sign up and get two months free by clicking my link down below if you use my link i get an additional month free um i signed up using someone else's code previously um and i had two free months and then you ladies have been using my code so i'm pretty much good i've been getting free months um and i think it's just a great incentive one and if you're looking to get into audiobooks i'm not an audiobook person per se um i find that i prefer audiobooks with reading at the same time like i can't just listen to the audiobook i have to have the audiobook playing like while i'm reading and with biblical fiction and christian fiction in general i'm really enjoying that sort of setup duo kind of thing but um yeah that is it for this video thank you guys for watching again this was all over the place i apologize we're gonna we're gonna get it together we this is a work in progress but i really like this look it is gorgeous <laughs> let's do a close-up real quick for you guys i really <laughs> really like this look we a little irritated with this corner just slightly but um i really like this look it's so pretty so pretty so i'm gonna take my pictures right now and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures because I feel cute. I'm going to make um my two-minute video review of the book. And then that is it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. If you are not subscribed to the family, join, become a Zoda of Increase or a Son of Increase. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.